Use the means of today to reach the people of today. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. Atong pagsaulog sa ika-500 katuig sa Kristiyanismo sa Pilipinas, dagang mga grasya ang atong nadawat. Ug ang usa niini mao ang programa sa Katolikong Simbahan nga mao ang pagpili sa pito ka mga simbahan nga mga karaan ug pagmugna sa balaang pultahan alang sa pagpanaw duaw. Amo karong ipailaila kaninyo ang usa sa mga simbahan sa tibuok Archdiocese nga dunay porta santa kun balaang pultahan. Mayong adlaw kaninyong tanan, ako si G. Rhea, nga sakop sa Youth Apostolate, gikan diri sa The Most Sacred Heart of Jesus Parish, Kalinan, Davao City. Ang parokya sa Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, usa sa pito ka mga simbahan, nga karaan ug napili nga madunay porta santa o balaang pultahan. Kaniadong 1948, Dala sa labing panginahanglan nga maadunay simbahan dinhi sa Kalinan Davao City natukod kining maong parokya. Ang unang pari mao si Father Octaverium PME ug gisundan kini sa ubang mga pari nga PME. Ang unang diocesanong pari nga nahimong kura paroko mao si Monsignor Edgar Rodriguez. Ang Holy Door kun balaang pultahan usa ka dakong simbolismo nga nagkahulugan sa pagpadulong kang Kristo. Kini nagpadayag og kalinaw nga makabot nato tungod sa pasaylo sa Dios. Atong pangayoon ang panabang sa Most Sacred Heart of Jesus nga mamahimo kitang sama kaniya aron maato ang gingharian sa langit. Ug karon, iandam nato ang atong kaugalingon sa atong pagpanawduaw ning balaang pultahan pinaagi sa paghinulsol sa atong mga sala ug pagampo sa akto sa paghinulsol. Aron madawat nato ang indulihensya plenaria. Inok sacro yeyunio usa squadratario. Pagsulod sa simbahan, magampo kita og usa ka amahan namo. Maghimaya ka Maria, ug himaya sa mahan, alang sa mga intensyones sa atong Santo Papa, Papa Francisco. Daghang salamat kaninyong tanan. Maukad to ang pamaagi sa pagpanawduaw ni mga balaang pultahan din sa Archdiocese sa Davao. Oratio Imperata Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease 
and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other to see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saint Paul the Apostle, pray for us. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Salome Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family, Fancy May D. Imbong, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of the Vow, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, T. Linaw Trucking Services, Mr. and Mrs. Protasio and Fe Takandong and Family, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Shardan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Aviles, Williams Food House, Mr. and Ms. Lucas B. Datoy and Family, Jess and Amelia Deason, Gus and Sophie, Mrs. Ampi Casas and Family, Adolfo and Malu Ato, Purita and Lorenzo and Family. Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring group. Daniel R. Aguinaldo National High School, Drans, Administration, Faculty and Staff. Teodoro L. Palma Hill Elementary School, headed by the Principal, Sir Marlon de Assis. Thanksgiving Intentions, Dida Tumalip, Anonymous, Magdalena Kukam, 
Carlos Tanan Family, Salvador Family, Rusel Caballero, Adeline Mejos and Family, Marlon Diasis. Good Health, Mercy Evangelista, Ernesto and Erlinda Aguilar, Lita Montalban, Nelio and Evelyn de la Peña, Lilia and Bonifacio Mabilin, Ronel Mabilin, Vivian Cam, Captain Ireneo and Betty Malano. Special Intentions, Peace in Ukraine. Recovery and Healing of Emil Season, Regina Cispedis, Julie Sanz, Linda Torrejos, Rodi Torrejos, Merlin Brasha, Sol de Velos, Eva Suarez. For the eternal repose of Rodolfo, Bernardo, Milagros, Luciana, German, Erlinda, Claudio, Thelma, Marutas, Julio, Minandro, Sr., Anastasio, Filipa, Eduardo, Ernesto, Sr., Jessica, Manuel, Renerio, Sr., Conrada, Adelaida, Leoncio, Damaso, Floro, Linda, Christine, Roger, Urbano, and all those who died of COVID-19, all the souls in purgatory, all deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission. Prayer for the Sick Lord and Father, God without end and Almighty, through your grace you give us strength and help us in our weakness. In your mercy, touch your sick people, deliver them from their sicknesses, and restore their good health, so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, conversion from a life of sin is a long journey back to the home which the sinner left in the deceitful attempt to assert his, her freedom against all rules. Though in different degrees, we all belong to the broad category labeled sinners. Today, Jesus reminds us that God indeed is a merciful Father who is not only ready to accept us back in His house, but even runs to embrace us as we journey back to Him. The presider of this Mass is Father James Cervantes, M.I.C., Marian Fathers of the Mary Immaculate Tubuk Davao City. The choir during this Mass is the Voces Marianas, Pauline's Media Choir, Davao City. Let us joyfully celebrate the banquet of love. Please stand as we start the Holy Mass. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your uh, today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent, also known as Laetare Sunday. It's a Sunday to be joyful. Let us pray for the grace to experience this joy of being children of the Heavenly Father. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, 
through my fault, through my most feeblest fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The celebration of the first Passover in the Promised Land was a memorable event because it showed that the Lord had fulfilled the promise He had made to Moses to bring the Israelites to a land flowing with milk and honey. It was now time for them to live as people of the promise by the honoring their terms of the covenant. The first reading. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. While the Israelites were encamped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th of May. One day, after the Passover, they ate the produce of the land in the form of unleavened cakes and parched grain. On that same day after the Passover, on which they ate of the produce of the land, the manna ceased. No longer was there manna for the Israelites, who that year ate of the yield of the land of Canaan. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Extol his name. I 
passage we are about to hear, St. Paul emphasizes God's initiative in the work of reconciliation, the vicarious role of Christ in the expiation of sins, and the instrumental role of the apostles in making reconciliation available to all. The second reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation, namely, God who was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be seen who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country, where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, 
and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here am I, dying of hunger. Shall, shall, I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat uh, one of your hired workers. So he got up and went to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast. Because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called out one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so, happy Sunday. Or maybe I should say, joyful Sunday. Uh, I love you. Uh, you know, this story of the prodigal son, they say, is one of the most beautiful stories in all of Scripture. Some people believe it's the most beautiful story in all of scripture. The story of the prodigal son is actually uh, our story. You know, it's all of our stories uh, because uh, we are the prodigal son. You know? We are the ones who go away from, from, from God, the Father. We do our own thing because of our own pride, our selfishness. Uh, we, we want to do our way, our will. We have our own plan in our life. And then something happens to the son, he, he comes uh, to hardship, he loses all of his resources, he has to find a job, he's hungry. Uh, and this hardship is not uh, such a bad thing, it's actually a blessing in disguise. Because it, it causes him to, to turn to his father, to think, how can I go back to my father? You know, My father, I can work for my father and, and maybe I can have some food to eat. So it's actually a blessing. And there are some beautiful details of what happens here. So on his way back to the Father, what happens? I like this detail, it says here, while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him. You know this phrase, still a long way off, the father caught sight of him? What was the father doing? 
the father was waiting for his son to return. Now that's a beautiful thing. The father is also waiting for us to return to him. You know, we have been far off and, and the father is, is waiting for us to come back. You know, he, it's, you can see the, the love of the father, no? The love of the father that he's waiting for us to come back to him, to turn to him. And so what does the father do? Filled with compassion. So the father is filled with compassion. You know, when we go out and sin, the father is not filled with anger. You know, the father is not filled with disappointment. You know, he's not filled with rage, wrath. No, the father is waiting, filled with what? Compassion, with love, with mercy. So it's something not to be afraid of. And then what does the father do? He runs to his son. You know, he makes up the distance because the way to the father is very far. We cannot make it on our own. So the father actually comes to us. You know, he meets us. You know, all we have to do is just make that little turn, that turn to the direction of the father, then he will run to us with compassion and he will meet us. And this is a beautiful thing. And even the son doesn't say anything. What does the father do? Embraces him and kisses him. You know, the son didn't even open his mouth yet and already he is in the embrace of the father and he's being kissed by the father. So the father is like the first one, you know, to, to run to us, to embrace us and to kiss us. And what does, this, what does the son say? I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But what does the father do? The father quickly orders his servants Put the finest robe on him, put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet. You know, you know what these mean? The robe, the sandals, the ring, it's a sign of dignity. You know that because we sinned, we lost our dignity, we lost our status as children of God. You know, but then when we turn back to the Father, what does He do? He restores all of this back. We become children of God again, children of the Heavenly Father. This is a beautiful thing. Not only that, He says, take the fattened calf and slaughter it. So there's a fiesta, you know, there's a party when we come back to the Father. It's a time to rejoice, to celebrate uh, because of this um, return. You know, they say Lent is the journey back to the Father. You know, that no matter what we have done, even if we have lived very sinful lives, even if we haven't gotten Mass for a long, long time, haven't been to confession in a long, long time, have been committing grievous sins, mortal sins, we can always go back to the Father. This is something to be joyful about. This is something to rejoice in, that the Father is waiting for us to return to Him. He wants us to return to Him, no matter how bad or how sinful we have been. We can be like Vladimir Putin, you know, invading another country, innocent country, killing thousands of people. And if Vladimir Putin decides to repent of his sins, and to say sorry and turn back to God, God filled with compassion, the Father filled with compassion, will restore His dignity, forgive Him of all His sins. That would be a beautiful thing, no? That would be a reason to rejoice. That would be a reason to celebrate, you know, the conversion of a sinner. You know, the, in Scripture it says, I do not wish the sinner to die, but to turn back to me and live. You know, God does not want sinners to die. God wants sinners to repent, to turn around, to come back to Him and live, to rejoice, to have this life with God. So that's a beautiful thing. You know, the, and the, there's something I would say a joy to experience in this. You know, it was the responsorial psalm, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. You know, this is Leitare Sunday, uh, Sunday to experience joy. I imagine many times people go to Mass on Sunday and it's boring Sunday, you know, they fall asleep. You know, it's just like ordinary Sunday. They don't experience any joy. They don't taste and see the goodness of the Lord. You know, because you know why? They don't come back to God. They don't repent of their sins. You know, we have to repent. We have to say sorry. And just that turning around, then we experience the joy of being with the Father. That's the secret. You know, one time I had a man come to confession to me. And he had committed some grievous sins. He had hurt a lot of people. And he kept asking this question, but Father, will, will God forgive me of my sins? And then he would confess more sins. And then he would ask, Father, but 
Will God forgive me for my sins? I caused a lot of pain, I hurt a lot of people. You know, I have to keep reminding this, this man, yes, you know, you forgive, you, you've confessed your sins and God forgives you. You know, he restores you to grace, he restores you to dignity. Yes, you're forgiven. I think he must have asked me like seven times. I think the last time I said, you know, you are forgiven. You have to have faith that you really truly are forgiven, that God wipes away all of your sins. There's no more, no more sin on your soul because you've confessed and you're sorry for what you've done. And I think the last time he finally accepted the truth of these words. And he, he accepted this truth to his heart. He started to tear, started to fall from his faith. He said, thank you, Father. Thank you, I'm, I'm forgiven. Oh, and, and, he, and he really experienced this joy of being forgiven. This joy of coming back to God. You know, I, I would say many people, they go to confession, it's like routine. You know, they, they just go to confession, there's no emotion, there's no feeling. But really, it's a, when we, whenever we go to confession, it's a, it's a chance to experience this joy of being forgiven. That these sins are not on your soul anymore. It's a relief, you know. If you die, you don't die with these sins. It's gone. It's forgiven. It's forgotten. And there's something beautiful about that. There's something to rejoice about that. You know, I was talking to one of the priests at Divine Mercy Shrine in El Salvador. He says, you know, these last Sundays, there's been a lot of people going to confession on Saturdays and Sundays. Sometimes they, conf they hear confessions all day, from 8, eight o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the evening. You know, con people just coming back to confession. Why? Because... You know, after this pandemic, a lot of people are going back to church. After this pandemic, a lot of people are going back to confession. They haven't been to confession in many years. You know, and so they have lines, lines of confession. I said, wow, what a beautiful thing. You know, a lot of, you can say, prodigal sons and daughters are coming back to the Father. You know, and the Father must be rejoicing. You know, celebrating that all of these children are coming back after a long, long, you know, pand pandemic. A beautiful thing. You know, if you haven't been to confession in a long time, if you have some sins on your soul that need to be confessed, don't be afraid. We have a Father who is filled with compassion, a Father who is filled with mercy, who is waiting for us just to make that little turn, just that little turn, and He will run to us and embrace us and to kiss us and forgive us and put this robe and a ring and sandals on our feet restore our dignity. You know, this is a Sunday to be joyful about. You know, let us pray for, for, the, for, for all the sinners in the world. You know, that they might experience the mercy of the Father. That they might just make that little turn. You know, just that little turn. And once you make that little turn, the Father will do the rest. You know, and how, how, what a beautiful thing that sinners will experience the mercy of the Father and to return to the Father. Amen. Uh, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Today's Gospel passage reminds us of both our sinfulness and God's forgiveness. Full of trust in the divine mercy, let us present our humble petitions for all the uh, sinful members of humankind as we say, Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For the Catholic Church, may she always be an agent of reconciliation with God among the peoples of the world. Let us pray. Merciful, Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. 
our spiritual leaders may they zealously fulfill their task of calling God's people to conversion and bring sinners back to the home of the Father. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayers. For all parents, educators, may they edify their children and students with their good example and mirror to them the forgiving love of God the Father. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayers. For our youth, may they learn from the prodigal son in the parable not to squander their gifts of nature and grace. And if they fall, may they never doubt God's immense love for them. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, in imitation of Father in today's parable, we may accept by encouraging a trust former convicts and other offenders who are seeking to start a new life. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations at war, may they enlighten with the Holy Spirit to solve whatever problems they have. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have fallen asleep in death, trusting in God's mercy, we pray, especially for the victims of war in Ukraine and COVID-19, the deceased members of sponsors, benefactors, and cooperators of all lines media mission. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we stand in front of you like prodigal children who have disappointed and hurt you so many times and in so many ways. Accept us once again with love and make us merciful towards those who have offended us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be life forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting, for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we you rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Romulo, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Where we come, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Glory and the Lord, 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 For those who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now, you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, 
I love you above all things because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gift of Kapwa The Sacredness of One Shared Togetherness Indigenous values have a lot to teach us about ourselves, where we come from, and our place in this world. In this reflective chronicle of his spiritual rediscovery of the Filipino indigenous core value of kapwa, or shared humanity, Dr. Gonsalvo distills a redemptive and renewed framework, an ancient and yet so new way for viewing our relationships today with ourselves, with one another, with the world we live in, and with our Creator. Gift of Kapwa is available at the Poland's Media Center, Bolton Street, Davao City, Philippines, at 190 per copy. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.